Hey guys, how are you doing today? Today is the fourth physiology video, the animal cell. In the previous three videos, we have talked about a quick introduction, the homeostasis, as well as the control mechanisms of your body, such as negative feedback, positive feedback. Today is the animal cell. Let's dive into our cells. How is the structure and what exactly is the function? Let's get started. The cell is the building block or the building unit of your body. Your human body has approximately 100 trillion cells. Living organisms are either prokaryotes or eukaryotes. Eukaryotes such as you and me. We have membrane-bound nucleus. We have a mitochondria. We have membrane-bound organelles. Our DNA is protein-bound and linear. We can be like we are of course multicellular but eukaryotes can be unicellular as well. They reproduce by meiosis or mitosis, which exactly is right. What does these words mean? Pro means before, karyote is the nucleus or the nut. Eukaryote means true, karyotes, again, the nuts. So instead of going crazy or going nuts, let's all go nucleus or go karyotes. Just kidding. There are four fundamental concepts of cell theory, like three and the fourth is very brand new. So, first one, all living things are composed of cells. Shocking, isn't it? The cell is the basic functional unit of life. You don't say. Cells arise only from pre-existing cells, is that right? And fourth, cells carry genetic info in the form of DNA. I love this one. Okay, but what about the viruses? Viruses? All right, so three and four do not apply to viruses. Why? Because they do not evolve from previous cells. They need our human cells, okay, to help them replicate. So they are not self-sufficient. Cells carry genetic info in form of RNA in cases of viruses. So viruses are kind of weird. As you know from elementary school, I guess, so group of cells form tissues, group of tissues form organs, and group of organs, they form systems, and these systems perform different body functions. So we have some organelles or small organs inside of our cells, such as mitochondria, lysosome, peroxisome, Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum, whatever. Here is the cytosol or the cytoplasm, here is the nucleus, and together these are called protoplasm. Protoplasm is made of five basic substances, water, electrolytes, lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. The protoplasm is surrounded by a plasma membrane or a cell membrane. The organelles are separate cellular compartments suspended in the cytosol. The cell membrane is lipid by layer. What kind of lipid? Phospholipid. The nucleus has the DNA material, which is organized in chromosomes. This is your genetic footprint. Organelles and a cytoskeleton. Since everything needs a skeleton, your cell needs a skeleton. We call it cytoskeleton because cyto means cell. Form follows function. For instance, sperms need to move. They need lots of energy, so they will have lots of mitochondria. Islets of Langerhans in your pancreas, they need to secrete, so they need lots of Golgi apparatuses and endoplasmic reticuli or reticulums, I don't know. Red blood cells just carry oxygen, so they have no organelles. I'm talking about the mature red blood cell. In brave, mitochondria is the powerhouse, lysosomes are the sol soldiers, endosome is the delivery guy, rough endoplasmic reticulum is the translator, it's also uber, and it's also your CPU, central processing unit. The smooth and plasma reticulum is the donut. Golgi is the sorter, peroxisomes are your gym trainers. What is the difference between cytosol and cytoplasm? If you'd like to know the answer, I've made a specific video on this topic, so make sure to watch it. In the next video, we'll talk about organization of your human cell. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. 
Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.